How to use web views in Flutter on Android and iOS to display web pages from the internet or local HTML files in your Flutter app. We will also inject JavaScript to our Flutter web view to autofill forms and to remove the header and footer of a web page. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. To implement web views, we make here use of the official package Flutter web view. Let's get started within our build method by creating a web view widget with an initial URL. By default, JavaScript for our websites is disabled and therefore we also want to enable JavaScript. And with this, we have here this embedded web page inside of our Flutter application. And this is exactly the web page that we have defined here on the left side. In case you want to load unsecure websites without HTTPS, then this is not working by default. So you will get here on Android and iOS here this error or a white screen. To also load unsecure web pages, make sure to add here these configurations for Android and iOS. And secondly, to make here this web view in general work, you also need to go to your pubspec jaml file and here under your dependencies, you need to include then this web view flutter package. And lastly, you also need to go inside of your Android app folder and here you have this build gradle file. Here you need to scroll then all the way down until default config and make sure that your min SDK version is here at least 20. After this, close and reinstall your application and then you should also see here the web view inside of your Flutter app. Next, we want to add in our web view a controller and with this controller, we can control here this web view and we want to simply put then this controller inside of our state. And now we can make use of this controller inside of a new floating action button. And if we basically click here on this floating action button, then we want to call here this method load URL on our controller. And here inside you can put here then the new URL inside to which you want to navigate. And before we try this out, we also want to detect new changes here in our web view. And therefore you simply go to your web view and add here the property on page started. And here you get then every time the URL in case the user or you change programmatically here the website. Let's also try it out. I click here on this floating action button and then we are navigating here to this new website which we have defined here on the left side. And secondly, you should also see inside of the console the website to which we have navigated. And this is because we have implemented here this on page started property where we get then every time the new website to which we have navigated. And the same thing works also if the user manually navigates here in our web view. Then you also should see here the website to which he has navigated. Alternatively, next to listening only for website changes inside of this callback, you can simply call also the current URL method on your controller. And with this, you get then the current URL of this web view. Let's also try it out. We are here on Amazon's website. And now if I navigate here, then we are going to the YouTube page. And inside of the console, you also see that the previous website is here Amazon and that the new website is here YouTube. And these are exactly the things which we have here printed inside of our Flutter project. Next, you can also inject some JavaScript inside of your web view. And therefore we want to remove here, for example, this header of our website. And to do this, you can simply run your JavaScript code by calling this evaluate JavaScript method. And here inside, you put then simply the JavaScript code inside. And in our case, we simply want to remove the header of our website and therefore you can simply define it here as header. And then you set here the display to none to hide it. Let's also try it out. So if I click here on this floating action button, then you see that our header was removed. Let's also look at a second example where we also want to remove here then the footer of our website. And therefore we can do here basically the same thing as before. We call again this evaluate JavaScript method. We execute here then some JavaScript code and here inside we want to hide then this time the footer instead. And with this, I can click on this floating action button and then also our footer will disappear. 
Let's also inject JavaScript to Facebook so that we can autofill here the form and also automatically click here on this login button to log in our user. Therefore, you need to go first of all inside of your browser on your desktop and here you click then right click and inspect. Next, we want to change here then at the top to the mobile mode. And after you have changed here to the mobile mode, also make sure that you restart here your website so that we load here this time the mobile version instead. And now you can simply take here the select tool and then you search here for your input field. And here you see then the ID of this input field that you need to copy. And the same thing we also want to do for our password field. Therefore, we click here on the select tool and then we choose here password. And here on the right side, you should see that this password field is then selected. And we also want to copy here this ID. After this, you can go back to your floating action button. And if we press on this floating action button, then we want to call here two JavaScript methods. The first one is for our email field and the second one is for our password field. And therefore you can also define here the value that you want to set for both of these text fields. And lastly, make sure that you also put here the right ID inside for your email field and also the right ID from your password field, which you have copied before. Let's also try it out. If I click on this floating action button, then you see that he fills the email and the password field. And lastly, we also want to submit our form and therefore you can simply call here this submit method. Also make sure that before you submit, you also need to wait some time and therefore I wait here for one second and this is because this needs some time until this is here put inside of our fields and after this we can then click on our submit button. Let's also try it out. I click on this floating action button and then he fills here these both fields and now he is also clicking on the login button. And now you should be logged in here to your website. However, with Facebook we get here a small issue. However, if you simply hot restart here your application, then you should see that you are here logged into your Facebook account. Let's also quickly investigate here this issue of before. And here after we have logged in, he navigated us to a deprecated website. And this is because inside of the web view, Facebook makes it more difficult to log in the user. As a workaround, you could, for example, put here this is submitting flag to true before you submit here this form. And secondly, you can then go here back to your web view widget and here inside you also have this on page finished method. And here inside we basically check then if this is submitted flag is set to true. And if this is the case, then we want to load again our Facebook page and we set then this is submitting flag again to false. And with this, we can fill here automatically our form and then he will simply go directly to our Facebook page. Let's also go quickly again to this example of our Amazon web page. Before we have here removed the footer and the header if you have clicked on this floating action button. However, normally you want to remove it immediately. And this is what you can also put inside of this on page started property. So here you put then simply the code inside to hide here your header and the footer. And lastly, also make sure that you wrap here this code around. So you can first of all check that we are here on the Amazon website. And then you want to hide here the footer and header. And secondly, you also need to make sure that you wait here some milliseconds before you remove the footer and header, otherwise you will face some issues. And now if you click here on hot restart, then he should automatically hide here the header and also the footer, so you don't need to click anymore on the floating action button. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this example application, then you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses, where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel.